waiting for the ball to get dropped here. It'll be Grand Valley in dark, in white, going right to left. Lindenwood in dark, left to right. Winner is your division champ. Loser. Study for their next exams. It will be Grand Valley with the ball. Lindenwood defeated the Lakers in the regular season matchup 9-2 on March 31st. As you see in the sidelines, yellow and red markers. Yellow is 5 meter, red is 2. Inside the Lindenwood end. Grand Valley having a hard time to hurl it and it is stolen away by the Lions of St. Charles, Missouri. Now we'll see Betsy Zanico, the keeper of Lindenwood. Got to watch out for the keeper behind the between the pipes here for Grand Valley. Hannah Heemstra, four-time first-team all-conference. Backhanded off the post. Heemstra averts damage. I believe Heemstra is the keeper. We're sorry for any incorrect scorers, misidentified players, never inaccuracies. First minute of regulation. No score. Now set up inside. Ordinary foul. I think this is Emily Tuttle. In for the whole set. And I think that is going to be an exclusion foul called against Nikki Howe of Lindenwood. So six and five. Twenty seconds first power play right now for Grand Valley. It's Taylor Karen up top. Love it inside the five. The cross possession still with Grand Valley. Even strength. Shot there denied by Betsy Zanico. And it's no score with 5:21 to go in our opening period. Lindenwood finished as the fourth position at the 2018 National Collegiate Club Championship in Gresham, Oregon. So the winner of this game would be the fourth position at this year's NCCC, which is here at Wolf's Aquatic Center in South Bend. Cross there. Now we're inside the five for the hole. Off the pipes. Now Grand Valley with it. And we'll draw another exclusion foul. Second power play here. And Grand Valley doesn't take much time to connect. First goal scored by number eight. Might be Julia McCullough. And it's now 1-0 Lakers. Great start for Grand Valley. And Lindenwood responds. A goal by Cap 20 in dark. Abby Vermeer didn't take that long to tie it up. One to one here in the first quarter. And I think Grand Valley wanted the call, could not get it. The Grand Valley in white back with it. Lindenwood just scored. Now, Grand Valley has already gotten two power plays. And that's going to be another power play, I think. And that's a goal to the right corner for Tuttle. 2-1, Grand Valley. Emily Tuttle, number six, I believe. 2-1, Lakers. So far, it's Grand Valley State drawing the contact. Bella Baccia. By the way, this matches with the amount of goals the Lakers had in its regular seeding meeting against the Lions. Across here, the delivery off the pipes. Second effort, perhaps. Shot clock does reset. Spins, fires, delivers. And Lindenwood knots it up at two apiece. 
I think it's a good goal. And it's the second of the game for Abby Vermeer. Number 20 and Dart for the Lindenwood Lions. Josh Arment right now kneeling. I don't know if that goal counted actually. Oh, that could have been a call. And we're sorry for any scoring inaccuracies. Either Grand Valley has the lead or it's tied. And Grand Valley will confiscate it. Yeah, it might be a tied game. We'll get confirmation when the quarter comes to a close. But Grand Valley so far been aggressive. Lakers going right to left in white. And now Abby Vermeer has to sit out for 20 seconds. If you get three exclusion fouls, you are out. And we got ourselves a timeout. Two minutes, four seconds to go. In the first quarter, score will either be two to two. CWPA has a social media account focused on our club membership. Follow us today at CWPA Clubs for all club league news, schedule updates, and streaming information. That's at CWPA Clubs, the Twitter account focused on Collegiate Water Polo Association Club Water Polo. Wood and Grand Valley are vying to join these fine institutions at the National Collegiate Club Championship. They are... Your division champs so far, Penn State, Florida, UC Davis, the two-time defending NCCC winner, and Virginia, which was, a, which was going to host the National Collegiate Club Championship but could not at one point this year. Two minutes and four to go. We think the score is two to two, could be two to one. We're sorry for any scoring inaccuracies since this is a remote stream. And cell reception here is not as strong as our institutions. Now the timeout, Grand Valley on the power play. We'll pump it up inside. We'll fire! And we'll go the other way. No penalty kill there for the Lions. Of Lindenwood going left to right. Score believed to be 2-2. Two two, might be 2-1 Grand Valley. Offensive foul. We'll give it back to Grand Valley for about two minutes to go. A little bit too far. And it's easy pickings for Betsy Zanico. Now the outlet. With 2-10 to go in the quarter. Oh, great feed. Out in front, the skip shot is through! Abby Vermeer might have her third. It's, we believe, Lindenwood three, Grand Valley two. Unless it's two to two. Now, the last Vermeer goal might have not counted. We, we hopefully will get confirmation when this quarter ends. Grand Valley trying to hang in there with Lindenwood, and now this might be a breakaway for Abby Vermeer, who so far has generated all the offense. Vermeer hesitates. This is out to Paige Miller, and Vermeer denied by, I believe, the keeper, which would be Hannah Heemstra, if she is the keeper. Minute and a half to go. Good pass. Grand Valley. Draws another exclusion foul. Dave Miller had to be careful he doesn't lose his prime his star players. Because if you get free exclusions, you're rejected. 
And that's a bit too far left out of play. Goal throw for Betsy Zanico. Wood trying to win its... Let's see here. If ever division title, but second in the Midwest, won five in the Heartland and one in the Great Plains. Swarming defense by Grand Valley. Lions will back it up. Bella Baccia. And it's going the other way. Ofo here for the Lakers. Grand Valley hanging in with Lindenwood. Time is running out here in the opening period. Possession for Grand Valley. And I believe it will be yet another power play for the Lakers. And there will be a substitution for Dave Miller's Lions. Lakers with the ball. 22nd power play. Egg beater. And forces the ball under on Grand Valley. Score believed to be 3 2 Windenwood. Might be 2 2. Opening a confirmation the next minute or so. Breakaway opportunity. And a Heemstra will say, I won't let you. A minute to go in the first quarter. Tight one early on. Forty had one game decided by a goal. Illinois State defeated Notre Dame 12 to 11. That will do it for the first quarter. Taking a look at the scoreboard. It is indeed Lindenwood free. In the dark caps, Grand Valley in the white, too. Grand Valley's been really aggressive. Wyndham just gotten that extra goal so far. Wyndham Wood in dark going left to right. Grand Valley in white, right to left. Again, this is the 2019 Women's Club Midwest Division Championship game. Linden Lowe looking for its second Midwest title. Grand Valley trying to go to its third championship title. Now all time the National Collegiate Club Championship. Linden Wood in 9 and 16. Its best appearance was 4th place last year. Grand Valley trying to get its 4th appearance. 6 and 6 all time at the NCCC. Lakers get the ball. Trying to tie it up early on here. 3-2, to two, Lindenwood. And it's Grand Valley with the ball. Ordinary foul, no. Might have been a ball under. Possession now for Lindenwood. It's capped 12, Sydney Walsh. For the Lions. Good kick out. Skip shot and a boom! Lindenwood is up 4-2 to two now. On the goal by number 2, Bella Bacchia. Lots of Makes it 4-2. Believe to be the first multi-goal lead now for the Lions. Number nine in the CWPA club rankings. Number one is UCLA. Probably surprised about that. Well, UC Davis defeated Fresno State in the Sierra Pacific title game 4-3. Oh, look at that launch sequence! Grand Valley with the goal by... Well, it's hard to tell who it is. 22, perhaps. That might be Kaylin Zakarski. And Grand Valley has more goals in this meeting than in the regular season meeting when the Lions won 9-2. to two. So this is a much different game. When they win again on the 21-game division win streak. Has it lost since April 22nd, 2017 to Notre Dame. It was 7-6 to six in the third place game. Going the other way. Grand Valley for a chance to tie it up. I think Hannah Heemstra is the keeper. Heemstra along with being a four-time first team all-conference player. He's also earned quite a few honorable mentions in CWPA All-America. Grand Valley with the rock. That for the whole set. Draws an exclusion. 
So another six on five power play. It's the fifth or six. Now fires and Zanico saves it. One of what's missed on its last few. So far winning what is not got in the power play. Grand Valley has missed its last few lady advantages. It's cap seven, Naomi Sanders. For the perimeter. Pumps out for wet pass. Back to Sanders. Up top. Four seconds. Sweet. Will reset. Ordinary foul. Possession now for Linden Wood. 29 to shot clock. This is Kayla Hamilton. That's cap 17, Emily Kinney. And Grand Valley comes up with the confiscation. Two in the first, one in the second for the Lakers. Three in the first, one in the second for Lindenwood. Grand Valley looking to tie it up. How about this? Another power play. That's either the eighth or seventh for Grand Valley. In this first half. Eggbeater to the right side. Oh, that's going the other way. When the wood makes a substitution. 4-10 to go in the first half of this Midwest Championship game in 2019. Winden Wood in dark four. Grand Valley in white three. Oh, there's the cross. Another cross and the finish! Well executed and Wendenwood actually does not get credited with the goal. That was a foul. That's a ball under. If we possession Wendenwood. No goal. No goal. You gotta wait till the whistle sounds. And it was playing the goal of the damage. Ordinary foul. On worst. Now there's an exclusion. So first power play for Lindenwood. This is Lindenwood's third appearance in the Midwest title game. Its first came in... 2015 in his first season the Midwest lost to Notre Dame 8 to 5. Timeout in the pool 3.30 to go in the first half. This is turning out to be a dandy in the early going. Three and a half minutes left in the second quarter. The Linwood Lions in dark four. Grand Valley State Lakers in white three. This is Scott Samuel Leroy's Mark Hancher is manning the camera. We also have Heartland and Texas Division Championship Tournaments going on in the CWPA Network and the Division 3 Varsity Tournament. Thought about it, but decided to hesitate. Now thinking about it, pump fake with the egg beater. Thinking about when to pull the trigger. Now... Off the post, Heemstra. Do we have a five meter? Heemstra is saying, what did I do? She was bothering me. Now that is one to talk about later on. It's a five meter for Bella Bakia. It was a ball under on Heemstra. So Belabakia gets a five meter and connects. You do not get that too often, but you got to take advantage when it's called, and she does. Bakia believe they have both goals this quarter for the Lions. It's five three now, Lindenwood. Grand Valley needs to try its best not to let that get into its head. Five three Lions with three minutes to go in. The quarter. Might be a ball under. 
Lindenwood in its 9-5 semifinal win over Illinois State, which defeated Notre Dame in the third place game today, 12-11, led 1-0 after 1, 5-2 at the half. An ordinary foul. And it'll get turned over. I think the Grand Valley State fans do not want them with the win this. That's for sure. Of course, last year, Grand Valley was also the two seed, but lost the three seed Notre Dame in the semifinals. Notre Dame fell to Lindenwood in the title game, 15 to 13. Good feed inside. We'll force an ordinary foul. Bring it back. At the top of the five. Fire to the light side, but it slips out of play. Betsy Zeneco averts trouble. About two and a half minutes to go in the first half. It's anyone's game. Lindenwood is, I believe, free from Vermeer and two by Bakia. Spinning around. Hot potato. Ordinary foul. Was there a deflection? Yes, there was. Heemstra got a tip on it. Two meter corner for the Lions, and it's a fresh shot clock in the Grand Valley end. Oh, almost had an opening. Deflected back into play. Across. Not perfected, though. A lot of sizzle, but it is stopped by, I believe, Hannah Heemstra. And we're sorry if we have any incorrect players going by the rosters that we had been provided. Minute 20 to go in the first half. It had been quite a trippy first half. Pass it back. It's still possession Grand Valley. Shot clock winding down. We'll see if this is a good enough attempt. And it is delivered to the left corner. That was a desperation heave by Matty Worst. And it's now 5-4, Lindenwood in dark. It's about a minute to go in the first half. Not sure if, the, if that was a design play, but Josh Aaron, the head coach for Grand Valley, will take any type of score. Give Grand Valley credit hanging in there with a team that's won 21 straight in the division. And it doesn't give up 10 goals in the game very often. When it would, of course, start this tournament with a quarterfinal forfeit win over Miami, Ohio. Before that 9-5 semifinal win over Illinois State. We'll pump it. That's to the right side out of play. And somehow there was a deflection called. Be a two meter for the Lions. Lindenwood has yielded nine or fewer goals in ten straight division games. You know, the last time it allowed ten or more was the 15-13 title game win over Notre Dame last year, and Grand Valley has a chance to tie it. I think the shot clock's unplugged. That would be impressive if Grand Valley can tie it up into halftime. Try and design that. Goal scoring sequence. Grand Valley and White going right to left. Will fire from distance. Zanico makes the save. And that will do it for the first half. Tight one here at Notre Dame after two quarters. It's ninth ranked Winningwood in the dark. Five. And tenth ranked Grand Valley State Lakers in the white. Four. It is a tussle. And we will be back with the second half here in the CWPA Network. Grand Valley and White will be going left to right, and Lindenwood and Dark right to left. This is our final game of the Midwest Division season. Notre Dame will be the number 16 position at the National Collegiate Club Championship since 
May 3rd to 5th, the National Collegiate Club Championship is scheduled to be held here at Wolf's Aquatic Center in South Bend. Whichever Midwest Division team will join the Irish. Notre Dame, though, on a two-game skid, losing yesterday to Grand Valley 10-7 in the semifinals, and in the third-place game, lost a stunner 12-11 to fifth seed Illinois State. Not sure if any members of the Irish saw that coming. Grand Valley will win the sprint to begin quarter number three. Grand Valley would like to tie it up here. Going left to right and white, one on one with the whole guard. Looking for numbers. Gets it tipped away by the whole guard. And Lindenwood gets the possession. That was designed by Dave Miller, the head coach of Lindenwood. At the Lindenwood Men's Water Polo Club has won four of the last five men's National Collegiate Club championships. A lob is pounced away. And it should be a two meter for Lindenwood. It's third of the contest it will be from the near side. Nice stop though by Hannah Heemstra. You never want to guess will it go in and will it not. Just make sure that you do anything to deny it. A shot clock at first minute of the third quarter. 5-4 Lions of Lindenwood. The top seed. There will be an exclusion called So it's a 20 second power play for the Lions. They'll do some perimeter passing with the drivers. Across. Egg beater. Another drive pass. Will launch. Heemstra denies. The contingent here in South Bend. And look at the outlet. This is really promising. No whistle. Looking for room. It will be... Ordinary foul. Look at the cross. Trying to get the shot and dinks it in there. Grand Valley ties it up at five apiece on the goal by Mario Garbarino. Cap 11. It's five all. In the first minute and a half of quarter three. Mario Garbarino. Two-time first-team all-conference player. Two-time CWPA All-America honorable mention. And Garbarino shows her skills. And it's a 2 nothing Grand Valley run to tie it up at five apiece. Good save by Heemstra. And Grand Valley has a chance to reclaim the lead. There are no calls. Now there's a call. There's been a lot of splashing. I think the advantage rule might have applied. That's going to be an exclusion foul on Lindenwood. So Grand Valley is on the 6 on 5 for 20 seconds. Lindenwood will be making the substitution after. So at 15 seconds, it will be even strength or when it is saved by Zanico. Grand Valley has missed quite a few power plays. And now in transition here. Baccia scores! Bella Baccia gives Lindenwood the lead back. It's 6-5 Lions. But Baccia, that's at least her third of the contest. Ends that 2-0 Grand Valley run. Lindenwood. Three in the first, two in the second, one in the third. Grand Valley, two in the first, two in the second, one in the third. And now Grand Valley doing what he needs to do to stay in this game. Shot clock goes at 21. Ordinary foul on the Lions. Lakers have it. Grand Valley of Allendale, Michigan. Lindenwood of St. Charles, Missouri. Will advance to the head. It's going to be an exclusion called against Lindenwood. So Grand Valley with another power play opportunity. You're going to want to take advantage of this. 
Bouncing the ball. We'll back it up at the top of the key. Wet. The dry pass becomes wet. Got to be wary of the clock. Ordinary foul. The cross is intercepted. And now there's another good cross there to Bella Batia. And Batia with the debauchery of scoring. It's a 2-0 Bella Batia run. That's her fourth for the game. And Lindenwood is out to a two-goal lead again. 7-5 now in favor of the Lions. And again, this game is far from over. About four minutes to go in the third quarter, perhaps. Again, the regular season, Grand Valley lost to Lindenwood 9-2. to two. And all nine, and all of Grand Valley's seven division title game losses have come to Notre Dame. Two and seven all time in the division. Two wins were against Notre Dame and McKendry. When they were looking to repeat as division champs. And then we're with the ball. And it's going to be an exclusion foul called on Grand Valley. When they were on the power play. I think. 3.42 to go. We have a timeout. And the pool. It's 7-5. Nine Frank London Wood and Dark over ten Grand Valley and White. Three forty two to go in the third quarter. Grand Valley if it gives up a goal here, might have this game slipped from its grasp. But we've already had one game today that came down to the final shot. The third place game in which fifth seed Illinois State stunned third seed and host Notre Dame 12 to 11. Illinois State finished at six and five, I think. Now some perimeter passing for the Lions. Shot blocked down. A timely block for the Lakers. Heemstra with the lengthy outlet. That is a beauty. This is out for Garbarino. Lost control. How about that for Hannah Muller? Cap 8 with the defense for Lindenwood. Now three minutes to go in the quarter. 7-5. Lions in dark going right to left on your screens. Lindenwood with the pass. He sure needs to be careful here. Spinning around. Ball under foul called on Lindenwood. Back to Grand Valley State. Now Grand Valley still has plenty of time to try to chip in that lead. A halftime trailed five to four, trailed five to three at one point, made it five to five this quarter, but it's a two zero run. To the left side, but out of play. Goal throw here for Betsy Zanico. Lindenwood is also a smart team. Last year had a three point four nine nine five collective GPA, which ranked fifth in the CWPA. And now, Wood gets another exclusion power play. So, with Grand Valley excluded for 20 seconds, it's a 6 on 5 for the Lions. I'm faking with the egg beater. Will fire. And it gets past Heemstra with authority. Oh, that was lethal. For cap number, I think cap 20, Abby Vermeer. That is believed to be her fourth for the game, and it's now 8-4. Four. four for Vermeer, and I think four for Bella Bacchia. It's a 3-0 run. 
for Wendlandwood. Ordinary foul. Wendlandwood needs to be careful that does not get upgraded. Now inside the Wendlandwood end. And Grand Valley is being careless with the ball all of a sudden. Wendlandwood at the National Collegiate Club Championship last year. 30 to nothing went over Wellesley. And a 6-4 win over UC San Diego. Although an 8-5 loss to Cal Poly in 11-7. Third place game loss to Florida. Florida will be the free seed at this year's National Collegiate Club Championship here at Notre Dame. Trying to get the cross off the fingertips. Turnover. Possession now for Grand Valley. Almost a minute to go in the third quarter. It's Lindenwood 8, Grand Valley, and White 5 in the 2019 Midwest Championship game. Got a fire at will off the post. No whistle. Great take there by Betsy Zanico. Under 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. Lindenwood in dark going right to left with that free goal lead. Lindenwood won a game this season by a score of 8-5 to five in which it went on a 3-0 run to end the game to beat Notre Dame. Taken away by Grand Valley. Shot clock should be unplugged. And Josh Aaron's squad really needs to be careful here and go for a score. I think she wants to do it on her own. She will, and she capitalizes! I think that's the play on Aaron Rent. And it was good for Garbarino, her second of the quarter. It's 8 6 now in favor of Windenwood and Dart. Grand Valley just scored. Muriel Garbarino for second. Grand Valley 2 2 and 2 on the scoring line. Windenwood 3 2 and 3 in terms of quarter scoring. And this game is not over yet by any means. Windenwood will be playing keep away here for Dave Miller's squad. And that will do it for the third quarter. It's a close one here in South Bend after 21 minutes. It's top seeded Windenwood in the dark eight. And it's second seeded Grand Valley State in the white six. Can Windenwood hold on to win its second straight? Or can Grand Valley find a way to make the comeback? Now out of the sprint, if you're Grand Valley, you're going to want to win it and try to score on the possession. Then if refrain, we'll drop the ball. Grand Valley. We'll get possession. When the wood's contesting, what did I do? Grand Valley going left to right. In white, looking to get closer. Oh, just step or set free. So 35 seconds shot clock per possession and over past it. Possession Lindenwood. Least amount of goals Lindenwood has scored in division play this season. 8 against Notre Dame. An 8-5 win in the regular season. Approaching inside the GVSU 5. Skipper! And she denied it! Hannah Heemstra! Great presence of mine! And there's the pass! Fighting hard! That's gotta be a foul! That has to be a 5 meter. Grand Valley did everything right on that play and Windenwood tried to back off but couldn't. This is an important 5 meter free throw for the Lakers. To get a step closer in this comeback. Zanico awaits. Fire to the left side and through! 2 0 run, and this time it's captain number 23. I think that's Bryn Wolof. And the Lakers get within one. 
And the last time Grand Valley won this division 2017, one of its star players was Jess Hinderer, who's now a coach for water polo. It's going to be an exclusion on Grand Valley. And we might have a timeout as well. Six minutes, four seconds to go. Tight one here at Notre Dame. Wind and Wood and Dark 8, Grand Valley in White 7. It will be a 6 on 5 power play for Wind and Wood. Clinging, I mean clinging to an 8-7 lead. At one point not long ago, 8-5 was the advantage. Grand Valley lost to Lindenwood by 7 a couple weeks ago. This is a whole different game. You need to be smart here. There's the cross. There's Baccia. Top of the key, egg beater. Thinking. Nope. Another egg beater. We'll take another cross. Another fake. Thinking about it. Another one. There's a field player and the keeper. And it gets through the fingertips of Hannah Heemstra. Is that Abby Vermer with another goal? Perhaps. It's now 9-7 to seven and fans are trying to console Hannah Heemstra. But she, she's not happy. And that was a tough play. So, 9-7 now. Windenwood. With about five minutes or so to go. A lob! Oh, so close. But it was a little wide. Now Zanico with the outlet. Grand Valley gobbles it up. Here's Hannah Heemstra. Heemstra, the only goalie to win division titles for Grand Valley. And we got a whistle. And do we have more timeouts with 5.14 to go? We do. Oh boy, 5.14 to go in regulation. It's top seeded winning wood in the dark caps 9. Grand Valley, the two seed in the white 7. We're actually going to stay here to talk about our alumni program. The alumni initiative is... The most important new program ever established by the CWPA. We're asking graduating seniors to get involved after their collegiate seasons are over in one of four ways. Become a ref, mentor, coach, or financial supporter by giving back at least $25 a year. By engaging our alumni after graduation, we can add programs, make playing more fun, and reduce those participation costs. Contact the CWPA office at 610-277-6787 or office at collegiatewaterpolo.org if you or someone you know is interested. Scott Samuel Lever Weiss here on the call with Mark Hincher, man in the camera. And this broadcast is presented by CAP7 and the CWPA. CAP7 is the premier water polo provider specializing in all your wall water Polo needs. Visit cap7.com to find the gear you need to take your game to the next level. And a huge possession with 5.14 to go for Grand Valley. A two time division champ, last one in 2017. Wyndham Wood, a one time Midwest champ, trying to defend. It is a power play. Grand Valley pumping. Cross. Got to be smart here. Passes. This might be a good time to shoot it. Nope. Taking a bit too long. It is still Grand Valley ball, but it's even strength. Shot is in on the right corner, and Grand Valley is not done yet. How about Emily? Total cap six would maybe her first goal since the first quarter. It's now 9-8. Lindenwood over Grand Valley under five minutes to play. Back to a one-goal game.
And there's the cross outside the top of the five on the wing. Now moving inside on the Grand Valley end. And Heemstra saves it this time. Possession, Grand Valley. Going left to right and white. Windenwood in January participated at the UC Davis Invitational. Went one and three. So it is battle tested. UC Davis, of course, the two-time defending National Collegiate Club champ. 20 on the shot clock. A chance to tie it. Got to be smart here. Oh, another ordinary foul. We'll take it. Oh, we got an exclusion foul. How about that? On Lindenwood. And that is something Dave Miller cannot be happy about. He's going to tell his player how unhappy he is, probably. And I think it's going to be a six on four! Or a six on three? It's a six on four! The six on three? And they score! Grand Valley had a grand power play. Six on, it looked like three. It is nine all. Man. How did Lindenwood break down like that? It is a nine-nine ball game, ladies and gentlemen. This is turning into a classic. Dave Miller not calling timeout here. If he calls timeout, it would not be a good thing. Got to slow down the momentum of Grand Valley. Lindenwood looking to regain the lead. Ordinary foul. Lindenwood going right to left in the dark caps. Inside, Heemstra denies it. And it will go to Grand Valley with a chance to take a lead for the first time since the first half. 3.40 to go. Possession, Lindenwood. Now playing defense. Lindenwood has had trouble with the ball. Led 5-4 to four at the half. And that's going the other way, offsides. Three minutes and change to go. And it is a foul against Grand Valley. I think Grand Valley's Hannah Heemstra guilty of the foul. So now you got to find a way to not allow a score with the goalkeeper off to the side. 3.27 to go in regulation. Top seeded Windenwood in dark nine. Second seeded Grand Valley in white nine. Winningwood, 21 game win streak. Hasn't lost since the third place game in 2017. 7 to 6 to Notre Dame. Last year, Winningwood won 15 to 13 in the division championship over Notre Dame. So, 22nd power play with Hannah Heemstra. Booked for 20 seconds. So you got to be able to get a stop for 20 seconds without the goalkeeper defending the pipes. You have two defenders. Looks like a 2-3-1 formation. Six on five. When they were getting instruction from head coach Dave Miller. Josh Arvin may have been in these experiments before. I think he in college played as a goalkeeper for Grand Valley so he knows probably from personal experience how to handle this it's taking a while to get these things situated to see if we have the right players now Grand Valley scored the game tying goal to make a 9-9 on I think what looked like a 6 on 3 which you see basically secret rare amount of times very rarely extremely rare Josh Arvin's going to have a discussion with the official 
there going to be a card? There's already been a yellow card in this tournament today. I don't know if any of the coaches necessarily want to get booked. So here's the six on five with Hannah Heemstra in the time in the timeout box. Two defenders. Lindenwood, oh, nearly stopped. Got to get a stop here. And cannot stop Lindenwood. So, unfortunately for Grand Valley, that was costly. It's 10-9. Lindenwood on the goal by number seven, Naomi Saunders. Lindenwood regains the lead. Still plenty of time, though. Got over two and a half minutes. Left in regulation. Advance ahead. It's too far. Winwood gets the stop. Grand Valley needs a stop here, otherwise Winwood could start thinking about the possibility of celebrating a second straight title. Turnover will be possession for the Lakers. Grand Valley, two in the first, two in the second, two in the third, three in the fourth. Lindenwood, three, two, three, and two. Ordinary foul on Lindenwood. Lakers going left to right. 20 on the shot clock. Got to secure that ball. Shot is to the right corner and in. Or not. No, it's out of play. Oh, it went through the net. No goal, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, so close. But still, Grand Valley is not out of it. Not a keen pass. Lindenwood going right to left. This is the championship game. Shot fired. Skips to the left side. And Lindenwood is out in front. 11-9. Goal for number 20, Abby Vermeer. Is that five or six goals now? I think Josh Arman has to use a timeout with a minute 59 to go. So, okay. Down by two with two minutes to go. <music> Not saying we'll leave a This has been an epic battle. The third place game was epic. 12-11 win by five Illinois State over three Notre Dame. And now, you have Grand Valley, which had been down by as many as three, coming back a few times, only to surrender it back. So, okay, you got a minute 59 left. Not the end of the world. And it is possible to score four goals in two minutes as well. Grand Valley yesterday in the quarterfinals, 20-5 to win over Calvin, and then a 13-3 win, or let me look here. 10-7 win over Notre Dame. Won the win yesterday, a 5-0 forfeit win over Miami, Ohio, and a 9-5 semifinal win over Illinois State. Here's a good possession. Oh, ordinary foul. Back to the Lakers. Good side pass. Looking for room. And that is a clean pick. Not the possession Josh Orrant drawed up. And I think I just saw some glimmers of excitement come out of Lindenwood. Got to be careful here. Don't want to be cocky. Lindenwood, very close to making it back-to-back -back division championships. It would be its eighth ever. But only second in this division. This is its third appearance. This is Grand Valley's tenth appearance in this championship. Too far. A minute to go. Lindenwood just needs to be Lindenwood. One minute to go in the championship game. Dave Miller still acting as coach. He is not going to back off. Now Grand Valley will allow Lindenwood to take a lot of time off the clock. Don't want to take too much time though. Looks like they're going to take a shot clock violation here. 
Wyndham Wood does the smart play. Shot clock violation. And Josh Oren still has a timeout to use. So with 33 seconds left, Grand Valley needs to score and then get a stop. I mean, if it means to do an exclusion foul, you might need to do it. It's like fouling someone on a three-pointer. Fouling someone who has the ball in basketball just because you have a three-point lead and you don't want them to tie the game. It's going to be an exclusion against Lindenwood. Grand Valley is going to take it quickly, though. Can't be complacent here. About 20 seconds left. You need to shoot it now. The love finds the right corner. All right. So that part worked on number three. Maddie Worst, her second. It's 11 to 10 now. But is there enough time for a steal? Hold on, do we have a timeout? Okay, you need to get a stop here. So Lindenwood's about to win it for the second straight year, unless something ridiculous happens. Time about to expire. You gotta get a stop here. And that will do it, ladies and gentlemen. The Lindenwood Lions are your 2019 Midwest Division Champions. It's the second ever title and the second straight season. The Lions have won it all. Final score here from Notre Dame, Lindenwood in dark 11, Grand Valley in white 10. Valiant effort for both squads, but we were the Lions at the end fighting off the feisty Lakers. So the final tallies, three in the first, two in the second, three in the third, three in the fourth for Grand Valley. For Lindenwood, for Grand Valley, two, 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 and four. And congratulations to Lindenwood. Lindenwood will be the number four position at the National Collegiate Club Championship here at South Bend, May 3rd or 5th. And now we just await the post-game handshakes. Grand Valley gave it all it had, but this time came up short, and for the eighth time in club history, Grand Valley finishes as a runner-up. So Grand Valley finishes the season at 9-2 and two in division play. Lindenwood improves to 11-0 in the Midwest and makes it now 22 consecutive. Division wins in a row. Dave Miller squad a bit tougher and Josh Arvin's going to get a handshake day for Dave Miller what a game and what a season it was in the Midwest